All right, ladies and gentlemen, again, welcome back to the channel. Thank you all so much for coming over, man. We got Joe Rogan is shocked to learn about Thomas Sowell's wisdom. Again, hopefully I'm pronouncing the brother name right. Now, look, for those of you who may be new here, I just want to say this. Um, I don't lean left or right. I'm a person who looks for the truth. All right. I'm not into politics at all. Uh, I feel like all these presidents are puppets. So when you guys come to this channel, I know conservative. I know liberal. I none of the above. I'm me. All right. A person that uh, is here to inspire. I'm a people person. You know, you see the message on the shirt. Just be a good human. All right. Be humble, be kind. Spread joy, peace, and love. That's what I'm about. All right. So, because I know when you do videos like this, people come in the comment section and they get crazy. They start arguing or whatever. But we're going to check this out. Again, appreciate all the love and support with you guys coming over. That video I did on Thomas Well about the racism not being taught in school was pretty crazy. Um, it wasn't nothing that was super shocking because, you know, I mean, hey, what is, what's shocking in this world today anymore? <laughs> you know, it's, it's but all right, we're going to check this out. Hopefully everything goes smoothly with this, man. So we ain't gonna waste no more time. Let's jump right into it. So, uh, do you know Thomas Sowell? Sowell. I know that name. Why do I okay. know that name? Thomas Sowell is a big, uh, famous conservative. He's at uh, Stanford. Um, he's at the Hoover Institute, I think. Anyway, so, you know, within this, I mean, first, just to set all this up, we should set up briefly how does culture work, right? And the way culture works is, is that it, like genetic evolution, it works based on blind copying. Mm. So what ends up happening is, is that you are in awe of people, right? You look up to. So they, they, I know people be saying a lot of time people be culture jockeying, you know. Um, let's see what he got to say. People, and so you blindly copy the things they do, and specifically you start by blindly copying from the outside, and then you work in. Thomas Sowell is a black guy, okay. right? And Thomas Sowell has for years and years and years been trying to fight racism. But he's been trying to fight racism by having a conversation about culture, mm. right? And the fact that there are essentially two different sort of, you know, to, we're speaking broadly here, right? But this is for the purposes of communication. Um, we're going to tell a simple story to start off with, right? So broadly speaking, he puts two different cultures of people with dark skin next to each other. And one culture is these people from the West Indies, and one culture is this group of people who grew up in the South with slavery and all that sort of stuff. Now, what one group, the West Indies group, does really well. So a, a lot of the successful black people, people like Colin Powell, are originally from that cultural heritage. The other group is the group that you find in ghettos and African-American communities and all that sort of stuff. They don't do So that. me, <laughs> who grew up in a ghetto, if you guys are new here, Vermont and Hoover, between Vermont and Hoover, all right, yeah. When you turn on the news and see the violence, it was right around the corner, right around the corner. So far, so good. Oh, I'm listening to. He's breaking this down well right they don't get good education they you know shoot each other yes. they're all these sorts of things and the reason why Sol has been telling this story is because he's been trying to say you know when liberals look at the people in ghettos they say ah racism that's why they're not succeeding and Sol is saying no it's not because if you look at this group from the west indies they also came from the experience of slavery there was slavery in the west indies they are also black so they also face racism and yet they do well. So it has to be something else. And that other thing is the fact that these black people who are in the South, there's always been a big question, were black people robbed of their culture or did they preserve their authentic African culture? And what Sowell is saying is that they were robbed of their culture. And so they picked up the culture of the people around them. And the people around them were rednecks. And if you look at the white redneck. What? Oh, this is deep, deep. 
what the culture and the black redneck culture, they have a lot of the same values. They don't particularly respect education. Wait, wait, black redneck? That just sounds so crazy to hear. Black redneck? Black redneck culture, they have a lot of the same values. They don't particularly respect education. They love Jesus. They use violence in their conflicts. And um, they, you know, there's there's just, you know, a lot of the same values and a lot of the same outcomes. And even Ebonics, which is, you know, black English, is actually all from the West of England. Yo. So <laughs> oh, man. Ebonics. Now I'm talking about <laughs> Finna. I'm Finna go. Hey, what's, what makes this funny is hearing this. Like, you you got to do your research to present this in a way for someone who may not understand can understand, you know? Because a lot of times if you say this, people be lost. Ebonics, what is it? Yo, shout out to this brother for knowing. Ebonics. Oh, that's crazy. Even Ebonics, which is, you know, black English, is actually all from the West of England. So it's actually this. What? It's from the West of England. Look at Joe. So, for example, if you go to places like Cornwall, um, there used to be these amazing, um, uh, these amazing ads on British TV, right? For this, uh, this Devon custard or whatever, and they would always say, "Devon knows how they make it so creamy," and they all talk like this, right? And so it doesn't sound like Black English, but they do say things like, "Oi be doing that, and we be doing this, and you be doing that, and they be doing that." And so there's that use of that copula be, right? Where instead of saying, "I am," "You are," "He is," "She is," "They are," they just say, "I be," "You be," "We be," "They be," which is the classic feature of Black oh. English, African American. Vernacular English. Oh. Right. Now. <laughs> I feel like Joe Rogan just listening. <laughs> oh, man. Again, you guys. These videos, you know, I know uh, uh, a lot of times it's supposed to educate people. I'm well educated in, 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 in the culture and, and a lot of stuff that goes on in today's world. Very, very, very educated. I just like to hear other people talk about it and what they got to say and what kind of research they did. And if they can bring anything new to the table that can keep me on the right path, you know, like, like for those of you who don't know, I hate the N word. I hate hearing it. And, and I hate, I got a lot of people that I'm cool with that say it like, like it's just like it's nothing. And I just be looking like, man, why we just can't replace that word with brother. I really, I said this in my other video. I just love calling people brother. What's up, brother or sister? How you doing, sister? I call everybody. I don't care what color you are. What up, brother? <coughs> The point is, is that how, mind blower, mind blower. Now, let's imagine that. How do you think that Thomas Sowell has been received by liberal America? <laughs> Not well. Not right? well. Not well. And so, for example, Sowell has a book called Black Rednecks, White Liberals. Mm. OK. And his whole point is that, you know, if you actually and, you know, again, like Sowell is, you know, he researches the shit out of this stuff. He yeah. really does his work. Now, if you if you look at the experience of African Americans after slavery, after slavery, they do really they they start to make real progress, right? And a large part of the reason why they make progress is because you start to get a lot of people from New England, either you know, black people from New England or white people from New England, who come down and sort of reshape the culture. They create these schools and they're teaching those New England values, right? It's those Puritan values of hard work, tenacity, all of that sort of stuff. And so there's all this progress. And you have people like Booker T. Washington. And Booker T. Washington was an actual slave. And then after he got his freedom, he got to go work in a salt mine, which is literally the worst job ever. And in hey. Booker T. Washington's Up From Slavery, he tells this great story about seeing a schoolhouse, right? And that, you know, he thought that going into a schoolhouse was about as close to heaven on earth as you could get. Mm. Like, this is a dude who wanted an education really, really badly. And that's a lot of what you find in the, you know, early black experience in, you know, the post-slavery period. 
And in fact, you know, blacks, you know, before sort of World War II actually had higher rates of marriage than whites, all of these sorts of things that, you know, are now supposedly a problem. And then there's this turnaround, right? The black experience starts to go south, right? It starts to get worse. And what year is this around? This is post-World War II, right? So, um, so post-slavery... Black people experience uh, a rebounding. There's They're starting to make some progress. There's ambition. Progress. Yeah. And I mean, you know, if in terms of books to read, like, you know, just because a large, you know, a large part of what I'm trying to do in general is really let's move to the place of all people are created equal. Yes. Like, let's remove all these stupid distinctions. Right. And really live that principle. And the problem. Yeah, so he what he's saying, what I'm getting from that is like, you know, you acknowledge what happened in the past, right? You acknowledge that. Everybody know that slavery happened. And I believe that everybody knows that racism still exists. I don't think no one is really, well, I mean, there's people who probably think it doesn't. But what I'm saying is, me personally, when I hear him talk or when I hear like see videos like this i think it's more so about the mentality right you can't have that slave mentality because you will never be able to move forward in life because you think that people owe you things you know and a lot of times you know we look at white people and expect them to treat us a certain way because of things that happened in the past that they had nothing to do. It might have been their great 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 grandfather, but they had nothing to do. So it 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 I get what they're saying. I do understand the importance of these videos. Um and I, I, I do feel like a lot of times when videos like this come out, a lot of people of the culture don't want to hear it because it's the truth. And they don't want anyone who don't look like them telling them things like this because the first thing go they gonna say is what have you been through to be talking to me like this and then on the flip side of that the real question is what have you been through to be acting like this now me personally personally i done been through some things but it had nothing to do with like racism or nothing like that i'm just talking about like growing up around the violence and, and your parents being on drugs and, you know, seeing them get off drugs and, and people passing away and just, just some, just life, man. But at the end of the day, how do you move forward? You know what I mean? How are you going to move forward and move on and stop playing like a victim role? You know what I mean? But these things do exist. All that the 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 negative stuff. It's because there's a lot of evil in the world. When it, when it, when it boils down to it, there's a lot of evil. I just see a lot of people trying to help, but I see more people who don't want the help, but then complain when they you know. I love how Joe Rogan is letting him talk. Maybe I need to. I just had to say that. Let me go back a little bit really let's move to the place of all people are created equal like let's remove all these stupid distinctions right and really live that principle and the problem is is that in order to really live that principle you need a new narrative that beats slavery mm. so you know it's not if you go and talk to racists you can't just say uh, racism is bad like that doesn't destroy racism right. right right what destroys racism is when you make sense of the things that they know right they see you know people who are violent in the ghettos or they see crime or they see a lack of education or they see that Africa is poor and you're able to tell a better story that makes sense of the things that they know but also comes out with the conclusion oh we actually all have the same potential mm, wow That was actually pretty deep. I love how he broke that down, man. Now again, I'm not trying to trying to How could I say this, man? After I watched that first video on slavery and then watching that Charlie Chion video, um 
it's just where I grew up at and and when I moved, I, I, I moved like 30, 35 minutes away. If, if there's no traffic, I'm only like 30 minutes away from where I grew up at in, in the ghetto. And I can say with confidence it was a ghetto because because you would see the violence, you know. I used to live in Compton, you know, 1992, when the, the Rodney King riots hit, you know, everybody was out there just looting. Everybody. You know, so to when I look back at my life just growing up to where I'm at today, and just to know all it took was for me to be ambitious and to have some type of drive and some consistency just to know that pretty much is what it all, what it takes. If you're passionate about something, it'll happen. But I feel like in today's world, a lot of people are just doing this. Like give me, give me, you know, they don't really want to work for it. And I see it a lot. I I see it. You know how many people I've hit up that I know and, and told them, like, you know, you should make a YouTube channel. You got a lot to say or you rap or you do this. You should make a channel. You know how many of them made it? Zero. Zero. You got to believe in yourself. Um, cause it's tough, man. I, I I mean, just being honest, it's tough, man. It's tough sometimes watching videos like this because like he said, potential, I know the potential of a lot of people. They just, I don't know, man. You can't help nobody that don't want to be helped. All you can do is try to inspire and hope that people would get the message that you're trying to deliver. You know, I love all people. Again, again, the fact that I don't lean any way, I love that about myself because nobody can pull me in any direction. You can pull me to the truth. You know, whether it's coming from this side or that side, hey, what I'm saying is the truth is the truth. Evil is evil. And a-holes are a-holes. All things can be true. But I just love the shock that Joe Rogan got. Um, but again, man, this was a pretty good video. I wanted to see um, what Joe Rogan, because Joe Rogan, he be interviewing some. I, I thought he was going to be on. I thought Thomas was going to be on Joe Rogan's show. Is it a video with him and Joe Rogan? Because that would probably be something. You know, see, videos like this, I don't really consider to be that political. This is just like kind of like an education, information, you know, video. Hmm. All right, man. Hey, again, appreciate y'all coming over and watching. Peace out.